Today was the last Night City Wire before the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. We were shown a 5 minute long trailer, and from that I quickly wanted to talk about the customization, inventory, skills and attributes that were shown, so you can get a better idea about how you want to customize your V for Night City. Don't forget to sub to the channel for everything Cyberpunk. Now let's get into it. The first new customization options we saw were more hairstyles and beards. We saw the mohawk and the man bun earlier this week. But now we get a little bit more here in the official gameplay. We see some dreads as well as some other interesting side comb-overs and the pompadour style. We haven't seen many beard or mustache options, and it's nice to see a few here for the people that want them, even though personally, I wouldn't really use any of the ones that were shown. We see a quick shot of the inventory screen as well. V can hold three weapons, there's two upper body slots for a hat and a mask, two body slots for a jacket and a shirt, two lower body for pants or shorts and shoes. And there's also two slots for quick access abilities, which here in this scene they look to be for the cyberware that this V has equipped. So can you only have two cyberware that require active abilities? That could be a way to limit players ability to use multiple activate cyberware. Interestingly enough, there is a slot of special, which looks to be like a whole bodysuit. I'm not sure what could be placed here or why it's special. Maybe it's a set of clothing or gear that comes in one piece. We finally see a clip of the cyberware interface. We knew there were plenty of slots for the cyberware, and I must say the UI looks amazing. I love how we can see the body with the nervous system and the bones. We can see the cyberware here called Titanium Bones, which allows V to increase carrying capacity by 20%. The operating system slot seems to be one of the more important slots for your V. This legendary Raven Micro Cyber MK4 boosts base RAM by 10, 8 buffer size and 6 slots. It allows you to perform quick hats on targets or devices while scanning increases the time for an enemy netrunner to hack you by 100%, increases quick hack radius by 60%, and increases RAM recovery rate by 6 units per 60 seconds. The OS is important because it seems to allow how many and how quick you can perform hacks on people and devices, while simultaneously giving you defense against other netrunners. Now, for people looking to do a netrunner hacker build, the OS cyberware is probably the most important for those reasons. Being able to pull off many hacks in a short amount of time will be their bread and butter, so don't skip out on a good OS. If you look closely enough too, you can see the rarities of the cyberware, which would increase their effectiveness and their ability with the higher rarities. We also get a glimpse into the updated attribute and skill tree UI, and I must say that there's going to be a lot of choices and builds that players will be able to do. The official description of the technical attribute is, your technical ability determines how much of a tech specialist you are. It improves your proficiency in crafting items, especially weapons as well as your proficiency with tech weapons and your effectiveness against drones, mechs, and robots in combat. Each level increases your armor by 5%. Your technical ability also unlocks unique dialogue options and opens new pathways for you around the world. I think the technical attribute will prove to be very worthwhile and important in Cyberpunk. I feel it's been looked over by others because it isn't flashy in combat, but upgrading and making your own weapons and such could be a huge game changer down the line in the game when it does get more difficult. Then we see the reflexes attribute. Reflexes determine your reaction speed. They briefly affect your evasion with each level increasing your chance to avoid enemy attacks by 1%. Reflexes also increase crit chance by 1% and mantis blade damage by 3% per level, as well as improve your overall attack speed and movement speed. This attribute affects your overall proficiency with rifles, pistols, and revolvers. Your level in reflexes also slightly affects how quickly you gain experience for related skills. And we do see those three skill trees involved, being the handguns, rifles, and blades. Reflexes is going to be a huge attribute for players who want to use any of those three weapons. And even if you don't, the extra percent in evasion and crit chance alone will be nice. If I'm not mistaken, you can max out in 20 points at an attribute, which would be 20% chance of evasion and crit chance. And if you're using Manus Blades, you'll get an extra 60% damage. That's literally pretty insane, as well as being faster all around. As the video progresses, we see a few skills that are in the skill trees. In the rifles tree, we can see a skill called Bullseye, which increases rifle damage while aiming by 10%. That's a decent amount of damage. I wish we could see some of the others, especially the middle finger one. In the blade skill tree, we see Flight of the Sparrow, which will reduce the stamina cost of all attacks with blades by 50%. The next one is Slow and Steady, which will increase armor by 50% while moving. And at max, it will increase armor by 30%. And the last skill is Offensive Defense. Defensive attacks with blades deal 200% more damage. These three skills alone are a huge boost for combat with blades. Now, one thing I don't know is if the Mantis Blades will get these bonuses from here, or if they only count towards blades that you're actually holding. It would be pretty insane if it did affect both. Here we see a Netrunner V attempting to hack into a camera, 
There is three options, control the camera, turn off the camera, or distract enemies. Remember the OS cyberware? Well, the RAM is the amount of hacks that you can do, and we can see the cost of using some of these abilities here. Controlling the camera is the most RAM at three. And with that legendary OS having 10, controlling the camera would cost almost half your available RAM. And that was a legendary. So I'd expect it'll take a lot of time before a low level V can have that many options. So in the lower levels, our hacking abilities are gonna be very limited. Now, when hacking actual people, the hacks cost a lot more of RAM. The most expensive being the suicide hack, where you make someone, well, shoot themselves, like this poor guy. There's also a hack that blinds the person and a hack that is called breach protocol. It is being blocked by this person, so we can't really see what it actually does. It was cool seeing the flathead robot being used. CDPR removed this little guy from being a companion, sadly, but it's nice to see that we'll still be able to use him in some of the missions. I'm actually kind of glad they removed him from being usable. Legion has their spider bot and it actually made the game really easy. I know you don't have to use it, but it was just less of a hassle most of the time, so I did use it. I don't want the same thing to be for Cyberpunk. The hype is so high right now from this trailer, we see a glimpse of the customization options we're gonna be able to use, and there is going to be so many different builds for this game, it's unreal. The perks did sound a bit overpowered as well, but I think that's the point. You start from nothing and become the best merc Night City has ever seen, so you have to be powerful, and CDPR is gonna make players feel exactly that. Let me know down below what build you're gonna run, don't forget to drop a sub to the channel for everything cyberpunk. Now stick around for some more videos coming up. If you want to chat live, you can find me on Twitch Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And remember, always take it to the edge. It's the cyberpunk way.